we found that Hasura is ultra stable and is actually better at planning queries than some of the sort of endpoints that we were used to writing by hand. Um, and GraphQL on the front end just makes all sorts of things a lot easier. Uh, basically, since I've already started talking about them, I'll go over the key benefits that we've seen. But last year, keep in mind, Pipe is only a year old, just about in the current form. Um, last year, we had planned on hiring six front end developers, and we only needed to hire three. So that's half of the half of the expenses. That's half the team size, and um, more interesting work for everybody involved, basically. Uh, the amount of toil that's required to just build and iterate on the front end has been dramatically reduced because now we can very easily change what data is being fetched. And all of that comes down to using GraphQL and a standardized data fetching layer. And that's only possible because Hasura just plugs right in, sits in front of our database, and we don't need to worry about writing any sort of conversions or writing those, those APIs ourselves. Um, in the past, we would essentially have to write a separate endpoint for each of the sort of types or shapes of data that we'd want to fetch. And they wouldn't compose very well. And it meant that if you were a front end engineer working in Helsinki, you might have to wait till someone with more Golang sort of knowledge working in San Francisco was online. And there's only a few hours every day where those people actually overlap. Um, basically, we're seeing that it takes about a tenth of the time to, to develop a new page in our application or a new component. Uh, based on having adopted Hasura. That's a rough estimate, as all these numbers are, but um, it's really much, much faster. And more importantly, there's just a lot less to worry about. Um, both on the front end, it's easier for me as a non-TypeScript expert sort of engineer to go in and say, hey, I know how to ask for an additional field here. Hasura will do all the right things and make sure the queries work out. All I have to do is add in an additional attribute or column name to this blob that I'm trying to fetch, and Hasura will do the right thing for us. Um, that's great. That means our iteration times go down. That means it's just less headache, and it means it's just more fun to work on the front end. Um, plus, then we no longer have to hear about front end people trying to write Golang, which is often a somewhat frustrating experience, um, although I think they learn to love it a little bit. Uh, another thing that we started to see is we've moved a lot of our logic, uh, our aggregation logic, into Postgres views and functions. And one of the main benefits of doing that is that we can sort of reuse that logic when we're querying it directly from the database in the back end as a Postgres query or from the front end in a Hasura query, because Hasura exposes those functions and those views through GraphQL. Um, again, that's a deduplication of effort. This has fixed uh, some number of bugs where we sort of forgot to update one of the calculations or one of the aggregates. And in general, it's let us rely on Postgres and take advantage of a lot of its features more by incentivizing it, by saying, hey, the more you can push into your database, the more easily accessible it is to both your back end and your front end side of things. Um, that's what I mean by the shared views between front end and back end. Um, we're also seeing that Hasura is not so bad at planning queries, especially it deals with the n plus one query problem pretty well. Um, in general, rather than having everybody on the front end who wants to fetch some data for their page learn how to write optimized SQL queries or have to coordinate with a backend team member to who can help them optimize those queries, we sort of get acceptable or even great out of the box performance by querying through Hasura using GraphQL. Between it and Postgres's query planning, um, it all just sort of works a lot better than, than some of the things we'd see rolled by hand. And I know if you're a hotshot company and all of, your, all of your employees are SQL engineers and they can optimize it, it still is a great choice because I love playing around with queries, but it's not the most effective use of my time. And Hasura can just make that problem go away essentially by default. Um, when there are slow queries and there are query performance problems, it's very easy to go in through the Hasura UI and diagnose them um, combined with the logging that it exposes uh, and the sort of metrics that you can use. Um, Hasura made it pretty easy to figure out sort of what's going wrong on this page, why is it so slow, and then speed it up in the few cases where it wasn't planning optimal queries. Um, we're also seeing that Hasura, like Steve mentioned earlier, is great for a case like ours where we have a lot of customers who should never see each other's data. Um, you definitely don't want to show sort of ARR numbers between two competitors to each other. That They would hate it. We would hate it. It would probably be illegal for a bunch of reasons. Thankfully, Hasura has a great permissions model that makes it very easy to plug in and say, hey, in this table, 
this column describes sort of the vendor or the user ID who can access it and only allow those results to go back to anybody who's logged in like that. Um, you know, auth is generally a very complicated and annoying thing to work on. Uh, we found that Hasura's permissions model is sort of matches what you'd expect out of the box and didn't require us to rewrite a lot of things. Um, essentially, if you have an auth token that says this user is this person, it's very easy to make sure that they're only seeing data that they're allowed to or supposed to when they're querying against Hasura, even though we use the same Hasura instance and the same API endpoints for all of our different customers. 